Welcome to the high level overview demo of Dynamics 365 Business Central Core. In this session, we'll be looking at all the key areas that are included within the core module, such as general ledger, sales and receivable and purchase and payables. First of all, what is Dynamics 365 Business Central? Business Central is an end to end ERP solution that enables companies to run their entire business on one solution. Business Central sits on top of the PAL platform, thus enabling businesses to leverage the low code, no code tools such as Power Automate and Power Apps, and also the ability to create custom reports with Power BI. I will now show you some of the key features that is part of the Business Central core module. The first area when you log into Business Central is the role centre. This is based on the user personalisation. I am set up as accountant currently, so this is what Microsoft feels an accountant would like to look at on a daily basis. So, for example, any pending approvals. These are our tiles um, any cash flow as we do have um, automated cash flow in the system. Um, and if I scroll down some more queues. So this is where all users start their journey when logging into Business Central. The next area I'm going to go to is the chart of accounts. So the chart of accounts is the heart of Business Central. This is where all the financial transactions will hit. So this is essentially your income statement and balance sheet. From here, you have the ability to filter out the chart of accounts. You can use it by the list, so filter out purely income and balance, or you can filter the total by. And you can use this based on date, which is great when you're doing your uh, month end. You might want to see the chart of accounts for that particular month. Your department, so department in my case, is a global dimension, which I'll, I'll talk about later. Um, and you can also obviously do your uh, business unit filter. So from here, um, what the system gives you the ability to do is drill down on transactions. So I'm just going to log in now into the general ledger entries. And from here, I'm going to filter on a particular transaction. So a document number in my case. I'm just going to uh, filter down on my document number. And what this will show you is it was a document type invoice but what I have the flexibility to do now is go to find entries and what the system will do now is give me the ability to drill down on the transactions so I can see it was a posted sales invoice that did this all the GL entries and if it related to a customer vendor or any VAT so if I click the posted sales invoice this will take me to the posted sales invoice document as you can see, this was my posted sales invoice document and it was for an item that we sold. So from here, I'm going to talk about dimensions. So dimensions within Business Central are your reporting tools. It gives you the ability to shrink your chart of accounts down and have it go long way. So, for example, uh, you could have one particular account for income and services, and then dimensions give you that ability to split it per department. So I'm just going to show you what I mean by that. So if I come into um, one of our reports that we get, which is GL balanced by dimension, from here you can see I'm going to use department. You can add a GL account filter if you only wanted to see particular accounts. So from here, I'm going to do show matrix. And what this will do, as you can see, my income services was not just purely for income services. I can now split it per admin, licenses, projects and support and sales. So you can then have the split of the chart of accounts and you have two global dimensions. They appear everywhere. And then you have six shortcuts, which gives you that extra level of reporting when you need to. The other nice thing in Business Central is on the chart of accounts themselves, you can have account categories and subcategories. So this then gives you that extra level of reporting again. I'm just going to go to my GL categories now so I can show you what I mean um, by that. So I'm just searching for my uh, GL account categories. And what I mean by that is it this also gives you a shortened version now of your chart of accounts. So I'm just going to push them all together so you can see now I only have six so we've got assets liabilities equity income cost of goods sold and expenses i can then drill into those and it splits it even further for me or for my assets you can see so you can see a shorter version of your chart of accounts 
Within Business Central, we can also have multiple currencies. So I'm just going to go to the currencies table now. So we have we can have as many currencies as the system needs. Um, and with in each currency, you have the ability um, to see the different exchange rates. So I'm just going to go to the exchange rates now. So you can see here based on my different dates depends on what what the system would like to do with the currencies um, and you can specify specify this manually or you can use a system like float rates that can automatically upload the exchange rates using a job queue on a daily or weekly basis. Once you've updated your exchange rate, you do have the flexibility then to run the adjust exchange rate. And what that will do is it will work out any unrealized gains and losses. And then once it's been paid or been applied, it will then work out what your realized gains and losses. Within Business Central, we have the VAT statement. So I'm just going to go to the VAT statement. So from here, within the VAT statement itself, this is where you'd specify your boxes one to nine. So this is the setup in the background. As you can see, I've got boxes uh, one to nine. Then a load of mapping below. So for the VAT, what I like to do is go to preview, specify the VAT quarter, and then it will give me my totals. And then what I can do is drill into those figures and see what's caused that value so I can reconcile my VAT. Business Central being a SaaS model and um, when making Touch Digital came about, we obviously needed to comply. So we created VAT returns. So VAT returns enables you to pull in your boxes one to nine and submit this to HMRC using making Touch Digital. Within Business Central, we have um, many different types of journals. We have general journals, recurring journals, payment journals, cash receipt journals. For now, I'm just going to go to a general journal. So the general journal itself is where you tend to do your month end journals or any adjustments that you need to do in your chart of accounts. So from here, you have the ability to specify um, which GL account you would like to um, move the value. You can do with and without that. Um, that is completely up to you. And you can do it as a one line journal or a two line journal. So Business Central gives you the ability to have a balancing account on the line or you can do a two line journal, as I know some people do like to um, have a two line journal. You can also um, export and import the journals using Excel, which is very simple using a config package, or you can actually um, use edited Excel and then you can edit the journal within Excel and push it back into Business Central. Um, and the other nice thing about the journals is you do have preview postings. So if you want to see what is going to happen before you post your journal, um, let's say you're new to doing journals, you can come to the preview posting and it will show you what's going to happen when you post this journal. So you can check if your figures are OK. I'm now going to show you GL budgets. So Business Central does have budgets. Now, budgets and forecasts are one in the same when dealing with Business Central. As you can see, I've got a budget for 2020 and a forecast for 2020. So within the budget, I'm just going to drill into it now. This is where you can specify your different monthly budgets. So you can say whether it's monthly, weekly, daily, yearly um, from here, as you can see, or quarterly. Most people are monthly, um, so you'd specify it's a month. You could specify your dates and same again. You always have the global dimension, so I can actually filter per department if I wanted to. How you would upload your budget is you would come to export to Excel. You can then export your um, budget to Excel. From here, you can specify the number of periods, which would be normally 12 when it starts. And if you wanted to, you can pull out the dimensions so that you can then import per dimension. The user would then upload the multiple uh, dimensions using the import from Excel, and they have the option to replace the entries or add to the entries. So if you're using department, you would always want to click add because that would give you the flexibility then to add up all your departmental budgets um, so that you can see it as a total rather than individuals. The next area we're going to go as we've just finished with budgets is account schedules.
So account schedules within Business Central is our customised finance reports. They, they're based on the chart of accounts, um, so they are always based on the chart of accounts. But what you do have the ability to do is define certain column layouts. So that gives you the ability to have one report layout, so where I've got my income and stuff, but I can change my column layout name so I can change it to cost budget if I wanted to. So I'm just going to change that and you can see I've still got that one rule, but it's but it's always changing the bottom, the columns. And um, so one of the most common reports is actual versus budget. So from here you can specify your GL budget filter. So for the particular GL budget that you'd like to use. There are other standard reports within the system. So, for example, we do have a trial balance report within Business Central and you can do the trial balance as a summed value or you can do a detailed trial balance and this will give you your trial balance for your monthly figures or yearly figures. And um, we also have things like age accounts payable, age accounts receivable. They're standard reports within Business Central. The other area, obviously, is the more common one that happens on a yearly basis, which is year end. So how Business Central deals with year end is through accounting periods. So within the accounting periods, this is where you'd specify where your year end runs to. For my case, it's January to December, um, but you could easily be March to April. It can be any time, but this is where you'd specify your financial year. So from here, what you'd be able to do is uh, create a new year and close the year. Once you've closed the year, you can run the income statement batch job, which then moves all of the values from the income statement for that year into the retained earnings account. And it creates you a journal ready for you to reconcile and post. For cash management, we have bank accounts. So within the bank accounts themselves, um, you can have as many bank accounts as you want or as little as you need. So from here, I'm just going to open up a bank account. But you have the ability to specify account number and sort code. Um, and then all this information is based on their statements. And obviously, very important, the bank account posting group. The bank account posting group enables the system to post to the balance sheet. So you could have individual accounts on the balance sheet or one account on the balance sheet, and then it will post to that particular balance sheet. I'm now going to go to bank reconciliation. As we are using bank accounts, you'd want to reconcile your bank account daily, weekly, monthly. It doesn't matter. But as part of the core module, bank reconciliation will not include the importing of bank statements. If you do want the ability to import your bank statements, please see the Banking Plus module. So from here, you will create your bank reconciliation for that particular account number, pop your statement date on and your statement ending balance. And what you'll run is suggest lines. So within set suggest lines, you say the period that you want to run it through and you click OK. What that will do is that will pull through all of the entries that are related to that period and will try and automatically match as much as it can to the transactions on the right hand side. So the left hand side is bank statement, so the suggest lines and then the right hand side is our bank account ledger entries. You can obviously use automatic matching if you want to or you can match manually. So if the system hasn't matched something but you know it's there, you can select the two lines and click match manually. What you can also do from here if you want to is let's say you've had bank charges um, and it's something that has yet to come into the system. You can manually add your bank account ledger entry and you can call it bank charges. Um, and let's say it was uh, £10. And then from here, what you can do then is you can transfer to general ledger. And what this will do based on the um, journal batch that you have, you can then click OK. And what the system will do for that bank charges line for you is it will add it ready for you. So you can see here I've got my bank charges line of my £10 and it already knew that it was related to that particular bank account. Um, so that's all I wanted to talk about around the general ledger. So the next area in the system we're going to talk about is accounts receivable. So within Business Central, you can do accounts receivable. So where that normally starts is customers. So within Business Central, you can create a customer 
I'm just going to go to my customer page now. And from here, what you will have is all the information that you need about your customer. So you can give them a customer number. The system can generate the number for you. Um, their name, their address, and just like the bank account, you have customer posting groups as well. And this defines where in the chart of accounts you'd like that particular customer to post. Um, so you have the normal details on the customer card. So once the customer has been created, this then gives you that flexibility um, to create your sales orders, your sales quotes, your sales invoices. Now within Business Central, you can start at any point. A quote can be converted to an order. You can start at an order. Um, or you can go straight to a, a sales invoice. So I'm just going to open up a, a sales order now. So from the sales order, what you'll do is you'll specify the customer who you want this particular sales order for. And you'll specify what they're buying. Um, then from here, you can post that order. Once you have shipped it, you can ship and then invoice or you can do a sales invoice, which you just invoice and ship at the same time. Once you've done that, that will create a posted sales document to be sent to the customer. And the final area around the cash receipts is the cash receipts itself. So we've now invoiced the customer. We've created the customer. We've invoiced the customer. Now we need the customer to pay for us. So I'm just going to go to the cash receipt journal and from here, this is when the user will manually come select the relevant customer that's in question. So if I go school of art and then from here, you have the ability to apply the entries. So if there's any open invoices, you can specify based on the remittance that the customer has submitted. How much you are going to pay. And there you go. And that's how the cash receipt works. So once that's done, you can then post the invoice. And what that will do is that will close down those invoices because they know they've been paid. Or you can do payment on account where you don't have to apply the entries. You can just put in a payment on account because you've yet to receive the invoice from the supplier. So that's everything for accounts receivable. So the final area I wanted to talk about in Business Central is accounts payable. So accounts payable, just like the customers, starts with vendors. A vendor will be created when you want to purchase um, goods from them. So I'm just going to go to my vendor card and very similar to the customers, you can create an account number for them manually or the system can create the number for you. Depends on how you do your numbering. And it also has their address and everything. And just like the customer, they have a vendor posting group which defines where in the chart of accounts it needs to post. So the next area is our purchase orders. So just like our sales side, you can start a purchase order at any point, a purchase quote, purchase order or a purchase invoice. So I'm just going to open up a purchase order and just like our sales orders, you'll see that you specify the vendor number. So who you'd like to buy the goods from and then what you are buying um, from the person. From here, you can then email the purchase order to the supplier. So the final area now is going to be the payment journal. So once you have created your vendor, you've processed and invoiced your purchase order, you're then going to want to pay your supplier. So how you can do that is within the payment journal itself. Just like the importing of the bank statement as part of the core module, a payment journal will not include the exporting of the bank's payments to a file. Please see the banking plus module. So from here, how you can prepare your, your journal is you use suggest vendor payments. Uh, specify when you last paid them and then you can obviously summarize per vendor or pull it in per invoice. Um, I normally suggest summarize per vendor and then from here you'd click OK. And what that will do is that will pull in all of the journal lines that you are due to be paid. Um, and then from here you can then um, post the journal and that just like the cash receipt that will close down any open invoices that are for that particular supplier. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like more information about the modules, please contact Tiski.